Um, I had a conversation yesterday, um, and during the course of the conversation, um, we kind of talked about two ideas, um, both of which I rather like. The first one is that um, there's no such thing as choice. Choice doesn't exist. Choice is just the thing, it's the word that we give to the period of time before we commit to an action. But whereas the word choice suggests a rational thinking process uh, and, and a sense of agency, in fact the reality is that there's just this period of time that elapses and then we do something and retrospectively we kind of invent this choice scenario to justify why we did whatever we did and very very similar thought that f um, that followed on from that was that um, if you plan and plan and plan and plan and, and try and work out every detail of your future you're kind of doomed to um, you're doomed to not doing anything and you're doomed to to unhappiness as well. Um, far better just to do, just to do anything and then retrospectively come up with a story or a narrative which justifies what you've done and, and, and makes you content with whatever you've done. I like, I think I like these two ideas, or well, I find them interesting because they imply that you can't change the present and you can't change the future, but you can change the past. You can write or rewrite the past. And I think that's some of what psychoanalysis tries to do. Um, so it, it, it's a nice way of uh, introducing a slightly lesser known psychoanalytic concept, which uh, in German has one of those very nice German compound words, Nachtraglichkeit. Um, in France, they call it après coup, and in English, we don't have a word for it, so we can uh, invent a neologism, or people have invented a neologism afterwardsness. Nachtraglichkeit, um, if you can pronounce it, and if you're familiar with German, is is what this this uh, theory is usually known as, and we can think of it in terms of trauma. So, in in the DSM-5 in um, kind of modern psychiatry, post-traumatic stress disorder or any kind of traumatic disorders are usually defined according to the event that precedes them. Um, but there's, there's lots of evidence to suggest that really it's, the event is only a small part in itself of what constitutes trauma. Um, there are a lot of other things that determine how much the individual is going to suffer. Um, and also that often the emotional effects um, of an event um, only occur months and months or even years after that event. So this suggests that there is a place for a theory which firstly, a, th a theory of trauma, which firstly looks beyond the immediate event, um, and secondly which um, looks beyond the more kind of usual deterministic understanding of time. That is where a causal event leads to an effect. Um, just an aside, uh, this is a, a Freudian um, aside on the deterministic versus the hermeneutic ideas of time. So Freud, I can't remember in which book, but it may be in the book on dreams or on the book on jokes possibly neither. Um, but he describes this man uh, who clearly thought of himself as a bit of a wit um, and was a, a great admirer of female beauty, so Freud says. Um, and he talks, this man talks about a particularly attractive wet nurse who had suckled him when he was a baby. Um, and he, he says that um, he, he regrets that I'm sorry I didn't make better use of my opportunity. There's two ways of looking at this. The, the deterministic view would say that there is already sexuality in the child um, and that the adult is, is subsequently excited by his much earlier encounter. The hermeneutic view would say that it's only his subsequent adult experience 
which sexualizes the original childhood experience. Um, we could argue that neither of these in itself is true, neither of these ideas of time is, is in itself true, but perhaps some sort of synthesis of the two ideas is possible, and in a way that's kind of what Nachtraglichkeit is. Um, I'm going to pause there, um, and I'll go into the, the theory in a bit more detail in a second.